here we are, still sheltering in place. It's Sunday, the 10th of May, 2020. We remain in the social distancing uh, world of the coronavirus. I'm saying this for history's sake. Somebody may unearth this one time in a hundred years and they'll know why we're putting this on video the way we are. It's Mother's Day, a day when we honor our mothers. We all have them. It's a very uh, special time for a lot of families. Um, kind of a hurtful time for other families. Families that are experiencing for the first time uh, mom not being with them. But we welcome you this day to this rather ersatz worship service. I thank all of those people who continue to contribute to make this, um, this opportunity, this gathering, uh, at least somewhat real. And I thank you for tuning in. And I thank you for being responsive to requests about the need for money to maintain the ministries of the church. Some of you might not know, but every day the beat goes on. There's some work that needs to be done, some stuff that needs to be cleaned up. There are some people that are struggling and need help. There are um, business matters to attend to, bills, bills to pay. Um, and I'm grateful that you were there. If not in body, you were there in spirit. As always, I look forward to seeing you in a better time.
everyone and happy Mother's Day. I hope everybody has a lovely day today. You know, one of the advantages of this COVID lockdown is that it is giving me more time to do some serious study in the Word. It's enabling me to spend as much time as I need or want in a daily devotion instead of trying to, you know, work it into my schedule or often not getting to it at all. But that's been really nice. It's also been very helpful for me because it has helped me work through all the layers of emotion that this pandemic has created. Like you, this isn't just affecting me on one level or in one way. It's affecting me in many different ways, and I've shared some of those with you over the past few weeks. While doing these studies, the fact that so many of the daily lessons seem to directly relate to our current situation is no surprise to me, even though the study that I'm using has actually been around for a while. Since the beginning of this pandemic, and still even now, I feel very strongly that God is using this opportunity to teach me, kind of in a baptism by fire kind of way, because so much of it plays directly into my own personal fears. And while logic may suggest otherwise, I still can't seem to shake this, mo this notion. So like a good student, I'm trying very hard to pay attention, to listen carefully, to take good notes, to do my homework, and hopefully, to remember what I'm learning, because I know at some point there's going to be a test. Oh, you think this is the test? This pandemic? <laughs> oh no, 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 no. This isn't the test. The test will come later, down the road, when all this is just a memory when I'm facing some other challenge, long after this, will the lessons I've learned through this pandemic serve me well? Or will I forget everything I've learned and simply revert right back to my old ways of thinking and reacting? You know, fear, anxiety, panic, the same old, same old. Sharpen your pencils, my friend, because that will be the test.
Please be with me in prayer. Lord, sometimes it takes many repeated efforts to reach us. Seldom do we listen the first time around. Please, Lord, don't stop trying. As we try to navigate all the feelings and emotions of this pandemic, help us to see the teaching moments. When we are tempted to give in to fear and anxious feelings start to overtake us, Help us instead to remember all the storms you've already calmed, all the miracles you've already performed, not just in the Bible, but in our very own lives. Lord, help us to use this opportunity to restore our faith and build our trust in you. Help us to see all the ways that you are present right here and now. Enable us to feel the strength of your hand as you guide us through. You are an awesome God. You are a powerful God. Help us to remember that today and every day after. Lord, this time has especially highlighted how important the people in our lives truly are. Today, we honor the women who brought us into the world, as well as all those who have greatly impacted our lives. We give thanks for all the women who have raised us, nurtured us, taught us, and loved us. Even though we are apart, even though they may no, no longer be with us, please let each one of them know, Lord, that our lives are better because of who they were and all that they did for us. Remind them, Lord, that we love them very much. We pray this in the name of your son, Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Today's Gospel lesson is from the 14th chapter of John, beginning with the first verse. Jesus says, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going. So how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. 
If you really knew me, you would know my father as well. From now on, you do, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the father and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, don't you know me, Philip? Even after I have been among you such a long time, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words I say to you are not just my own. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or at least believe on the evidence of the miracles themselves. I tell you the truth, anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing. He will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father and I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Son may bring, bring glory to the Father. You may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. This is the good news of Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God.
trust for six years in the 1950s and 60s, viewers tuned in to a TV game show called Just That. Who do you trust? It was a light-hearted quiz format involving married couples. One person, usually the husband, was given a category and he had to decide whether to trust himself or his wife to correctly answer a question in that category. Here's a fun fact many of you already know because, well, because you're old enough to know. The MC of Who Do You Trust was a virtually unknown personality by the name of Johnny Carson, who left after five years along with his announcer, Ed McMahon, to succeed Jack Parr on The Tonight Show a gig that worked out pretty well for both of them. It's a compelling question. Who do you trust? Or for the grammatically erudite, whom do you trust? Jesus says, trust in God. Trust also in me. Scholars have long known that the Greek word pistuyu is more accurately translated trust than believe. Some texts that say believe in God, believe also in me, suggest Jesus is asking for intellectual assent. Belief is an activity that goes on between the ears and is passive. Trust, on the other hand, is physical emotional, psychological, and soul-searing along with an intellectual enterprise and is dynamic and not static or passive. Believe and trust aren't the same thing. I believe in snakes. I haven't seen many, but I believe in them. I don't trust them. Anything that slithers is, you know, all slithery and, and not to be trusted. In one of the greatest heartbreak lyrics in rock and roll history, REO Speedwagon frontman Kevin Cronin rhymed, You didn't listen, with the picturesque phrase, You just lay still in the grass, all coiled up and hissing. Ouch. Unfortunately for love-struck Cronin, that bit of reptilian behavior didn't stop him. I'm going to keep on loving you, he crooned. It's the only thing I want to do. There's a man who needs a hobby. Who do you trust? I mean you. The 14th chapter of John is part of the farewell discourse in which Jesus leaves parting words and instructions to his closest friends. The familiar passage about preparing a place for his followers is frequently read at funerals because it speaks of warm, inviting things, place, house, and rooms. He tells those gathered around a room that he is going soon, and they will know where to find him. One of them, Thomas, says, We do? Jay, we don't even know where you're going. How will we know the way? Jesus says to him, I am the way. And Thomas says, Oh, sure, yeah, thanks. That, that clears it all up. I am the way. In identifying himself as the way, Jesus is asking, do you trust me? Do you trust me to get you into the relationship you want to have with God? I am the way. Do what I do. Think like I think. Love unconditionally. Love without borders. Give generously. 
Give graciously. Walk humbly. Be grateful. You know all this. You've learned my way, and you know it so well by now that my way should be your way. But until my way is your way, stay on the path I've shown you. If you default to your old way, it won't lead you to where you want to be. If you trust me, you will know that I am the way. You probably remember reading in the book of Acts that early followers of Jesus were call, weren't called Christians at all, but rather they were called the people of the way or just the way. Jesus is the way was their creedal statement, their motto, and their guiding light. Trust in God, Jesus says. Trust also in me. And now it's another disciple, Philip's turn to shine. Ooh, 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 Rabbi, I have a question. Can we see God? Could you just let us see him? You know, we want to see God. We'll be certain of everything if you'll just show us the one you call the Father. It's not a bad question. Many of us might have asked the same thing. Many of us have asked the same thing. But Jesus seems either disappointed or hurt, or both hurt and disappointed that any of his close friends would ask about seeing God. Seriously, he said, have I been with you all this time and still you don't know you've been seeing and experiencing the exact reflection of God? I haven't spoken my words, but God's words. My teaching doesn't come out of my head. It comes out of the voice of God. It is not I who heals, but God working through me. God revives, restores, resurrects, redeems. God gives life, breathes purity. God reflected in me. I am the way, the truth, and the life because and only because God, I am God's way and God's truth and God's life. You have to trust me on this. Who do you trust? I mentioned I believe in snakes, but I don't trust them. You know who else I believe in but don't trust? me. I have gifts and skills and talents enough to make me a believer in myself. Sometimes I feel like I could accomplish the kinds of things Jesus says his followers will do in his name. Sometimes I feel like I, like I could find Timbuktu in the dark with only a Swiss army knife and a compass. But there have been other times there are other times when I couldn't find my own rear end with two hands in broad daylight. Default to my old ways? I would. I have. I do. Especially in those times when I struggle to find the right choice, I look to the way. When I think I might even know the way, I ask the way. The old question, what would Jesus do, has lost its popularity, but not its importance. What Jesus would do is exactly what God would do. And how could anyone go wrong with that? I believe in a lot of things. I'm no pushover, I question everything and reject a lot of things that others buy, lock, stock, and barrel. But I believe in a lot of things, friends, good food, universal health care, baseball, and golf. I believe in my wife and my family. 
old dogs, social security, palm trees, and Martin guitars. I believe in the human family as a nuclear unit. I believe in first responders, the aroma of pine, competent journalism, and Langston Hughes. The list is long. I believe in a lot of things, but I don't trust a lot of things. I trust Jesus when he says, trust God, trust also in me. I trust Jesus when he says, you and I can accomplish great things in his name. I trust him when he says he is preparing for my arrival and yours in a city not made with hands, in the heavens, in the presence of God. I trust his promise even when I'm not sure that's what I want. I don't claim to know any more about this life or the next life, but what he tells me. But on what he tells me, I stake my life. And I know most of you do as well. It's all about trust. I trust God. I trust Jesus. All others, as the sign at the do drop in says, all others pay cash. I won't ask you to trust me, but I hope you'll consider with fear and trembling what I've said about belief and trust not being the same thing. I don't want you to be fooled. When someone tells me they believe in God, I pick one of the things I believe in. Maybe Carmel Macchiato or DeWalt Tools. And tell them so. It's not to be rude or dismissive, but rather to open a door to a conversation about what matters. Believing is meaningless. Trust is crucial. Because preachers are famous for throwing out platitudes without practical exercise, I urge you to read and follow the Apostle Paul's instructions to the faithful in Philippi. Paul doesn't claim to be the way, but he has embodied the way. And his way has stood the test of time and theological scrutiny and has valuable things to say. Finally, he writes, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, do. And the God of peace will be with you. May the God of peace indeed give you the wisdom, the desire, the courage and the power to put all your trust, all your trust in the promise of life of life in abundance, of joyous life, of life in union with Christ Jesus, of life beyond life. Hello, everybody. Um, this is Friday the 7th, I believe, unless I get my dates wrong. But uh, with, Mother Day, with Mother's Day approaching this weekend, I want to wish all you mothers out there a very happy Mother's Day. Um, right now, um, with an Anna update, she's on round two of her chemo. She's right now up there doing it um, while I sit here in the car waiting for her. Um, because of the, uh, the social distancing. Um, just, uh, just a friend, friendly reminder, um, please everybody follow the healthcare, wear your mask when you're out in public, uh, as long, especially when you're in the stores. Um, if you have a problem, just take it down off your, uh, down below your nose and you can breathe some of that fresh air and then put it back up. Um, 
but uh, being a volunteer first responder, please follow these guidelines uh, so that we don't have to come back to a round all over and start from square one. Um, I want everybody to be safe, especially all of our um, all of our, our all of our families, that especially the elderly. Um, they're the most vulnerable, um, but everybody stay safe. Um, we'll be get we're getting we're getting through this. Um, just just hang in there. We'll talk we'll talk later. Have a happy great Mother's Day, and see you soon. Bye for now.